Hello there. Who is quiet, Obi-Wan? Hello there, Obi-Wan. Hello there. He's about to say a lullaby. Hello there. That's, that's different. Eh? Uh, it's James Arnold Taylor here. It's the uh, James Arnold Taylor podcast. I'm feeling quiet. Uh, so that's a line right there. I'm feeling quiet. That's a line from a movie. Uh, it's called Grand Canyon. Steve Martin, Kevin Klein, Mary McDonald, a lot of different folks, Danny Glover. And there's a funny line in there. I'm feeling quiet. Anyways, there you go. Welcome to the James Arnold Taylor podcast. I guess I am feeling quiet. You know why? Because it's, uh, what time is it? It's about 1138 on Saturday, the, what is the date? Oh, the uh, 19th of February. Why? Because I'm recording it early because I got a lot going on this week that, you know, I could talk about, I suppose, in the podcast. But, you know, first off, so it's it's late. My family is in bed. Now, the thing is, is I'm in a booth that has 18-inch thick walls basically all around. And so nobody can hear me. And my studio is kind of away. From, well, it's it's close to my daughter's room, but it's it's far enough away from her, like her bed and stuff. And she just went to sleep anyways. So she's not even asleep yet, but she wouldn't hear me anyways. I asked her, I said, just before I said, do you hear me in my booth? And she says, only when you're like doing like the big yelling things in, in shows and stuff. And I was screaming the other day in a show. I can't, I guess I can't say what show. I mean, I guess I could say what, I don't know. Well, anyways, it's a, a, a TV show, a cartoon, a series. And I play, I play a big guy that screams a lot. And, and then I was, I was screaming a lot in that. And, but I was actually screaming as a, as a British guy. I was actually screaming like this the whole time. And so, um, and so she was like, I heard you screaming then in my bathroom. She, <laughs> I think like through the vents. Anyways, welcome to the show. I'm going on. Look at that. Oh, look at Siri. I did not ask you to say. I have in my booth, I have two iPads and then a touch screen for the computer. And then of course my, my phone is in here as well. And so if you say anything that remotely sounds like eerie you know with an s yes james how may i help you they're all always listening aren't they a little creepy little creepy i'm sorry james i can't do that that's a reference from another one of my uh, uh favorite movies uh, that's 2001 space odyssey open the pod bay doors hal i'm sorry dave i'm afraid i can't do that Anyways, welcome to the James Arnold Taylor podcast. Going to be fun stuff for you today. Hank, you're just quietly, I mean, Hank, so for those of you that are wondering, now if you don't know Hank, is most people I think listen to this show and have listened to the show for a long time. If you're brand new to the show, there's characters on the show. The show's called Talking to Myself. We'll bring in the announcer in a minute. He'll announce the show and give you the whole rundown. But there's people here that help out. And I explain it all the time because I'm always assuming that there's somebody new. But the truth is, is most of you have been listening to the show for a long time. So you know who Hank is. But Hank has been sitting here quietly just standing on his microphone. He has his own SC Electronics 2200 microphone that he's on. Thanks to the good folks at SC Electronics. Go to seelectronics.com and check out their stuff. Is that a paid commercial? No, it's not. It's me just recommending that you do that. Why? Because they're the official microphone of my show. Why? Because I really like their microphones and they sent me some to try out and I loved them so much that I said, hey, I'm going to make videos about it. And then in, in kind, they said, well, you can keep those mics and thanks so much. So that's it. But that's not why I say I like their microphones. It's the chicken before the egg or the chicken and the egg or whatever. I said, I love the microphones. Then in turn, they said, well, then keep the microphone. That's pretty cool, right? Okay, the, look, I'm not like a big time celebrity at all. You all know that. If you're listening to the show, you know I'm a voice actor. I'm like a, Z, what is it, like Z list. I, Obi-Wan Kenobi would say I'm a Z, but a, a Z list celebrity. <laughs> So I don't get like lots of like, they're not like sponsorships. And I have other friends that are actors that are like that. It's like, oh, I'm on a TV show. So these shoe companies send me boxes of shoes to wear when I'm out because they, you know, whatever. So that's fine. But I don't get that. I don't get that ever at all or anything. I just talk about things that I like. So I talk about like Core Eats mixes, SE electronics microphones. I talk about Simple Mills foods. I talk about eating Evolve. These are just products that I like and that I use. And I that ginger people make wonderful little, ooh, those little ginger gins and all that and that's really good when you when you need to kind of have a burst of ginger i love all these things so i just talk about them there you go anyways hank is quietly sitting there still <laughs> still not said anything this is amazing hank are you done <laughs> yeah i guess so i guess i'm done how are you 
I'm just waiting for you to bring in Mr. Announce Guy and announce the show. You've been going on for like six minutes. <laughs> You're right. I'm sorry. Hello there. Well, now you're back to that? <laughs> I'm saying hello there to you. You're being very nice. Hank and I usually have kind of a little back and forth where we kind of fight a lot and stuff. And it, it's done in love. All of you that are concerned, please know, Hank and I, it's all done in love. Right, Hank? Whatever. <laughs> okay. Okay. And Billy the intern uh, went, you sent him to get something for you and he hasn't come back. Plastics. <laughs> what, what does that even mean? I don't know. I said, hey, Billy, plastics. Go, yeah, go, go. And he went, oh, yeah, Mr. Hank. Oh, that's your Billy impression? Yeah, I thought it was pretty good. Well, it's not. <laughs> Billy sounds like, let me see if I can do a Billy impression. So Billy is the intern here. And Billy uh, is a sweet kid who wants to be a voice actor and has, I've taken him under my wing. I'm mentoring Billy to learn the ways of the voice actor. And he helps out here in the James Arnold Taylor Studios, which we call the Jat Studios. And he goes and does stuff and he brings me coffee. And the thing is, I don't drink coffee, but he brings me coffee anyways. And Hank just seems to use him as what? Just like, you just, you just kind of mess with him. Yeah, I, 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 kind of, I, I, I tell him to get stuff that I, I know is impossible. Well, that's not nice. Yeah, but it's funny. Okay, it is a little funny. I'll give you that. So Billy's somewhere. But anyways, should we bring in Mr. Announcer Guy? I mean, I, I like to do the announcing this time. Well, we've tried that before, I think, and I don't think it went very well. So let's just bring in Mr. Announcer Guy. Whatever. Hey, Mr. Announcer, do you, you want to call him at least? You're looking a little pouty now. Yeah, I'll give him a call. Yeah, Mr. Announcer Guy, right? Like that. Yeah, you go, hey, Mr. Announcer Guy. I mean, I can't do it. See, if I do it, he'll actually come in. Well, what do you mean? But I can't, I can't do it unless you do it. Okay, but I go, hey, Mr. Announcer Guy. So you go, hey, Mr. Announcer Guy. No, that's whispering. I actually have to say it, but loud. You know how I say it. You're here every time I record the show. Yeah, but I just want to say, I, I got to get right. I'm a mimic. You're, not, you're a mimic? Yeah, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a master mimic. You're a master? So who do, okay, so do Obi-Wan Kenobi saying hello there. All right. <clears throat> Let me prepare. Wah, 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 wah. What are you, Al Pacino? No, I'm doing my other... What is that? Those are my vocal warm-ups I do before I do an impression of somebody. I'm a master mimic. Okay. So do Obi-Wan Kenobi saying hello there. It's it's like the, it's it's like this. Hello. Don't tell me how to do it. Okay, okay. All right, fine. Go ahead. All right, here we go. <clears throat> hello there. That w I, I, I'm speechless. It was pretty good, wasn't it? It was, it was perfect. Wow. You say, that was, that was very impressive, Hank. Yeah, you don't think I could do voices, but I do. I actually do some pretty good voices. That was, that was pretty impressive. Okay. Anyway, so I say, hey, Mr. Announcer Guy. Yes, James. Now, see, that's what happened. He came in. What do you mean? I heard you call and I came in. Hank wanted to be the one to call you. And then he wanted me to tell you how, tell me, tell him. Oh my gosh, I'm so confused. He wanted me to tell him how to call you in. And then I was saying like, you go like, hey, Mr. Announcer Guy. But I didn't want to do it loud because if I did it loud, you'd come in. Which I did. Yeah. So are you not ready for me? No, no, it's fine. It's good. All right, man. But can you do me a favor? Yeah, man, whatever. Can you go out and let Hank do it the way that I did it, and then you come in? Sure, man, why not? All right, Hank. Thanks, uh, Mr. Nelson, dude. Yeah, bye. Okay, so now you know what to do? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. what do I do? I go, I, what do I say? <laughs> you say, hey, Mr. Nelson, guy. What do you mean? You got to do it the right way, or else I can't mimic. I'm a perfect mimic, remember? Oh, yeah, you're a perfect mimic. All right. Well, that was a very impressive opening one. I say, hey, Mr. Announcer guy. Yeah, man. No, see, okay. <laughs> Wait, I, I'm so sorry, Mr. Announcer Guy. Can you just wait until Hank says, hey, Mr. Announcer Guy? You know, dude, it's it's all the way through a big door, and I barely hear, all I hear is, Hey, that was pretty fun. What is that? Like, that's like the little voice inside the mouth you do. D. Bradley Baker does that all the time. I've been doing that for years. It's, uh, so you talk inside your mouth. So, if I'm going to say something, the only thing I say right now is, oh, but my mouth closed. It's like a little guy that lives inside of my throat. <laughs> See? I have my mouth closed when I do that. Okay. Yeah. Hi. 
Maybe it's a new character. The little guy that lives inside James's mouth. <laughs> Silly. I can't do Mr. Announcer Guy that way. I tried. Okay, sorry. This is silly. This is what happens when I do the podcast at 1130 at night. Okay, so Mr. Announcer Guy, just step outside. And when you don't even close the door all the way. Maybe maybe that's the trick. Just to appease Hank. He's been waiting very patiently here. Yeah, man. He's very patient. Thank you very much. You got it, man. Okay, I'm going to step right out here. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. What's a wink, wink, nudge, nudge? I don't get what that means. That's that's like a Monty Python. That's a funny little bit, Hank. You should laugh at that. <laughs> Not if you don't get it. Oh, okay. Anyways, okay, so now you go, hey, Mr. Announcer Guy. Hey, Mr. Announcer Guy. Hey, man, I can hear you, but that's not the way you do it. You gotta go, hey, Mr. Announcer Guy. Yeah, man. Ooh, I did it to myself. <laughs> that's right. So, Hank, just go, hey, Mr. Announcer Guy. But he's already here. I, let's, come on, man. It's like now you're the one taking all the time. It's 13 minutes into the show. We haven't even started the show yet because of this. Yeah, but it's kind of funny, isn't it? I, I think it is, but I think some people might get annoyed. But it's kind of the whole point of the show. Yeah, man, he's got a point. It really is. Oh, uh, Mr. Hank, here. I'm coming. I've got your plastics. Oh, we did it. He actually brought the plastics. <laughs> yes, I was exhausted, but I got it. That's pretty much every type of plastic I can imagine there, Hank. That's, uh, what do you think of that? Well, I'll be a monkey's uncle. Uh, yeah, okay, but Billy is actually Bob's nephew, and Bob's his uncle. <laughs> it's still funny. Ooh, and dibbity doo and dibbity dee Oh, hey, uh, Bob. No, actually, we're not, re- I, I, I didn't mean to call you either. Boy, there's a lot of people in this booth right now. You know, it's a big booth when it's all me just alone. It's like a, a 7 by 10 booth. But with all of you guys in here right now, what do we got? We got Billy. Oh, yeah, that's him and Hank. We got Mr. Announcer Guy. Yeah, man. We got Hank. Oh, yeah, there's another onion sandwich. Ooh, stay on your own, Mike. We got Bob. Ooh, and dibbity doo All we need is Reginald. Don't call me Reggie. Right, right, right. Hello, James. Yes, hello. How are you? Yes. Wow, you're incredibly close to that microphone and and very close to my face. And I think you had some of Hank's onion sandwich. Maybe I did. Maybe I didn't. It's a mystery. It's actually not a mystery this close. Okay, this is a very crowded room. And uh, Mr. Announcer Guy, are you ready to do this? Well, I guess we need Jerry the Music Man (laughs) to play the music to get you started to do the show's intro. Is that right? Yeah, man. Okay. Jerry the Music Man! (laughs) Yeah, James, I'm not going in there. I'm staying out here. Too crowded. I don't blame you. Here's the music for the James Arnold Taylor podcast. Do your thing, man. Yeah, man. Ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, it's the James Arnold Taylor podcast. Talking to myself, the Jetcast. Get ready for another super show with the guy that's doing all the voices you're hearing, including this one. James Arnold Taylor! Well, what was that for? I needed to make sure I filled in all the time on the music. Yeah, you were running shorter because you, you shortened the intro there. Yeah, man. Okay. Anyways, thanks, Mr. Announcer Guy. You can go. And Bob, actually, and, and Reginald, and Billy, and, well, you Hank as well. I mean, you guys don't have to hang out in here. No, I, I, I'm quite happy in here. I rather like it right now. Yes, I haven't been on the show in a long time. Oh, and doobity dee and doobity doo, and I'd love to be around just to see what's going on. And I'm just here just to annoy you. Well, thank you, uh, all of you. That's great. Okay. Well, thanks, Mr. Announcer Guy. Are you going to go now? Yeah, man, I'm going to go now. And there he goes. But all of you have stayed. Okay, well, there you go. And there's the music. So it is another episode of the James Arnold Taylor Podcast. Hey, did you all have a fun time the last couple of weeks getting episodes of my interviews with Trevor Duvall? Trevor Duvall? Trevor Duvall? I still I, I still need to ask Trevor how he, how he pronounces it. Anyways, I enjoyed it. And I noticed by the comments that were left on YouTube and such that you all enjoyed it as well. And I thank you for that cool stuff. Always fun to have another voice in the studio to talk to besides myself. What do do you mean? What about me? Well, you're me. Yeah, that's true. Okay. But I I thought it was great to talk to Trevor and a lot of people enjoyed our witty banter back and forth. And we'll probably do that again. We'll probably do a a video for my YouTube channel. I saw somebody had asked on one of the podcast uh, comments this last week if I would record the podcast as videos. I, you know, I go back and forth on that. I, m- I may at some point, but 
I'd rather not because I, there's one out there. There is one on my YouTube channel where you can see me doing all the voices because I'm doing all the voices, right? And, I, you know, I like the mystery of it. I like you see, I mean, I think what I'll do instead is I do have more videos coming out on my YouTube channel. It's been a while since I put out just straight up videos like I was doing before. I used to do these little vlogs um, when like about a year and a half or so ago before the world went a little crazy and people got a little crazy and stuff. And I was doing these little like five to 10 minute, 15 minute vlogs. And I think, uh, you know, I could go back to something like that. It's, it's literally been a time thing lately of just getting the time to do all of that on top of everything else. But, you know, perhaps I will. Maybe I will. Maybe I will. Anyways, guys, if you're all gonna be in here with me, do you all have like questions for me or something? Uh, I mean, you know, uh, uh, Billy, what, what? Is there a question, Billy, that you've always wanted to ask me that you've never asked me? Oh, oh, uh, I, 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 would imagine, I would imagine there's absolutely, absolutely some questions that I would, uh, would, would want to ask you, sir, uh, Mr. James, sir, Mr. James, James, uh, just James, sir, James, a lot. Okay, we've done that joke a lot. Okay, well then, what, what, what? Yes, what would you like to ask me? Um, uh, okay. Um, somebody else go first. I can't decide. Okay. What? Oh, no, no. Um, 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 uh, no, no, that's not a good one. What's your favorite? No, you don't like to answer the favorite question. Why don't you like to answer the favorite questions? Well, okay, that's a question, but that's not your question, right? No, 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 that's not my question, but I, I do want to know the answer to that question. Okay, so the question Billy's asking me is, when people say, what's your favorite character, or what's your favorite episode of, you know, Clone Wars, or this or that, or what's your favorite line, or whatever, I always say... I don't have favorites. I try to just let the one that I'm doing presently be my favorite. So if I'm doing an episode of Johnny Test and I'm voicing Johnny Test, then Johnny Test is my favorite character. But if I'm doing Obi-Wan Kenobi, well, then Obi-Wan Kenobi is. If I'm doing Fred Flintstone, then yeah, do Fred's my favorite too. If I'm doing Titus, which is pretty close to my regular voice, uh, then Titus or Ratchet. Hey, if I'm doing Ratchet, then Ratchet is pretty much my favorite. Right, Clank? So what that is, is that's a grateful heart, you see, Billy. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. a grateful heart is, is a wonderful thing to have, and it's what we all should have. That's right, we should. Why am I grateful? I'm grateful to God, because I'm a, I'm a Christian, and I'm, I'm nothing without the grace of God. I'm nothing without the grace of Christ saving me. So uh, Todd Friel is somebody I listen to who I like quite a bit. He's got Wretched Radio. And I don't know if you're on YouTube or whatever, you can find Wretched Radio or you can find the podcast of Wretched Radio. And he always says uh, he is the aforementioned wretch that the song, you know, talks about, saved a wretch like me. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. You know, I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. So uh, for Christians that profess a faith in Jesus Christ, we say that we are wretches because we were a wretch in our sin and nothing we do can save us from that. Only the grace of a loving God that says, I love you enough to save you from your own self and sin and all of the junk that you are by taking the blame for it. And that's what Christ did on the cross. And then the resurrection from the cross, not just the death, but the resurrection is what then makes it that. There we go. We got a little Bible study there. Sorry for all of you that uh, get uncomfortable when I talk about Jesus, but I hope you didn't turn it off. Stick with me because it's going to be fun anyways, because we're going to do some other fun things and a lot of a lot of stuff going on. But I have to profess that. Why? Because it's just the truth and it's 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 me and it's my life and that's what it is. So I am grateful for every moment that I get to do anything that I do, Billy. It's a very long answer and I gave a very kind of, I guess, religious answer in that, but I did that because it's the truth. See? So there you go. So I try not to have favorites except for the one that I'm doing at the time is my favorite because my gosh, am I the luckiest man in the world to do what I do. So I know if you've been listening for a long time, you've heard me give that answer before and I'm sorry, but Billy is the first one with the question. That was his question. And Billy, did you think of what the other one was? Oh, no, I, I still haven't, but maybe I will by the end of the show. Okay, well, by, well, hopefully not by the end of the show, because if it's by the end of the show, then I won't be able to answer it. Oh, absolutely. That's, that's very true, yes. As, as my Uncle Bob would say, in doobity dee and doobity doo. Ooh, ooh, in doobity dee and doobity doo. Now I got both of you doing it. Okay, great. Thanks. Well, Bob, since we've got you here then, what question would you like to ask about from me that you've never asked? 
that was a really bad way of saying it. you're the guy that usually does all the answers and questions and stuff bob i should have had you can you ask me the question that you or ask yourself the question that i want you to ask me <laughs> does that make any sense <laughs> oh, and dibbity dee and dibbity doo. Yes, it does. So you want to know if I have a question for you that I've always wanted to ask you. Well, that was really easy the way you did it. I made it this whole thing. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Do you have a question for me, Bob, that you've always wanted to ask that you've never asked? No, I don't. <laughs> and why is that? Well, because I feel like you've answered them all. No, 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 I'm kidding, I'm kidding, yes, of course. Uh, uh, yes, I do have a question for you. Is there a place that you've always wanted to go that you've never gone? No, oh, that's, that's an all right question. You know, there were places that I wanted to go. So my wife and I celebrated our 30-year wedding anniversary. Wow, 30 years. Most of the people listening to this podcast probably have not even been alive 30 years. Although some of you have. But 30 years ago, I married my wife. And it, this year... It'll be 31 years. Isn't that amazing? In June. And we always thought, Bob, that we would go to Italy for our 30-year wedding anniversary. But the way of the world now with traveling and such, it just did not happen. You know, I have found that I, I don't have as big of a taste for traveling as much anymore. And, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, you're going to come to this Comic-Con or that Comic-Con. Are you going to come here and see that? I just don't have a great desire to travel much lately. Maybe that'll change. It's just I don't enjoy the travel like I used to. And it's and a, a lot of it, what it is, is I have uh, bad ears and my ears get really affected when I fly. And so it, it hurts when I travel a lot of times. In fact, it hurts when I'm in the studio wearing headphones all day. And so my ears are very sensitive from, I think, years of wearing headphones. So because of those things... I, you know, I don't love like getting on a plane and going somewhere, but would I love to go to Italy someday? I would. Why? What would I, what would I want to see in Italy? Well, for one, I do have some Italian in my DNA and I, uh, heritage. I have some Italian heritage, so I would love to see that. And I would love to see the art in Italy. And I would love to, the other thing is I have friends that go to, that have been to Italy that have said that have kind of strict diets like me and they say, oh, you can eat anything in Italy and it's all just fresh, just whap. They just pull it right out of the ground and there you go. And it's, it's not like all the chemicals we have here and stuff. So I would love that because, you know, one of my favorite foods, not, you guys didn't ask me this. Nobody asked me so far, like what my favorite foods are because I have favorite foods. And, but one of my favorite foods growing up was tomatoes. I love tomatoes. When I was a kid, you could get them like an apple and, and put salt on it. And then eat it. And oh, I know some people are going, what? And some people are going, ooh, I love tomatoes, but I'm pretty allergic to tomatoes. And so <laughs> I can't have them. And that really bums me out. It makes me sad. But I hear, I have friends that have like similar reactions to tomatoes. When they were in Italy, they're like, oh, I ate tomatoes. And that was great. I'm like, wow, that's pretty cool. So I'll eat tomatoes like once every six months or so. I will, because I, now again, I do all the cooking in the house. You guys know that because I cook for all of you all the time. Oh, and doobity dee and doobity doo, yes. You don't cook enough for me. Well, that's because you eat everything. It's, oh, anyways. So I love cooking. I do all the cooking in the house. And every six months or so, I will make a big pasta dish with the red sauce. And I do it all from scratch. And, oh, it's so good with the fresh basil and the parsley and all of that. And I, you know, do the, the caramelize the onions and the, everything. And I make this wonderful tomato sauce. And then we put it on like a, a gluten-free brown rice pasta. And I'm getting hungry thinking about it. And we'll do like some vegan cheese over it, a little Parmesan. I know some people, I lost some of you there with the vegan cheese. I know. Sorry. But you know what? Vegan cheeses have gotten really good nowadays. They really have. They've kind of mastered it. And because uh, I have, I have friends over sometimes and we'll put out some of the vegan cheese. And they go, this is great cheese. What is this? And I'll go, it's vegan. And they'll go, no. And I'll go, yeah. And they'll go, no. And I'll go, yeah. And they'll go, no. And I'll go, really? Because, I mean, you didn't believe me the first time. And, no, they don't do that. Anyways, but there's, so we do that and I'll cook up a big pasta meal and my wife and daughter love it and I love it. And then I pay for it the next couple of days because I, you know, it, it affects me. What happens is I get, um, this is TMI. I get cuts in my mouth. My mouth breaks out like in, in like almost like hives or what have you. Oh, it's terrible. Isn't that terrible? I know. And, um, 
And then that makes it very hard to do my job, which is to talk. So I'll do that. Like if I know I have no work for a couple of for like three days or something, I'll do that. Although the, it'll last for about two weeks, I'll have the effects of it. That's terrible, isn't it? It's awful, but it's true. And I love tomatoes that much that I will sacrifice my own mouth for eating some tomatoes every once in a while. But there you go, Bob. So there, uh, that actually, I ended up talking about my favorite food rather than the favorite places. But I hope that answers your question. Well, it doesn't at all, but thank you. <laughs> well, it kind of did. No, I'm just giving you a bad time. You are being sassy today, Bob. Bob normally reads all of the comments and stuff from the YouTubes and the uh, things from iTunes, the Apple uh, Apple podcasts and such. He used to read the emails. We're not doing emails anymore. Thank you all for uh, asking about that. There, there are no more emails right now. And here's another thing that was that was kind of devastating to me that happened this weekend i'm i'm going through my instagram and I, for those of you that have instagram you know that if you have well let me hang on i gotta i gotta get it here so i can actually kind of walk through it what is it because i don't know what it's called there's this little spot you know where you get messages so you have primary general and requests okay so now the requests thing has been weird for me for a while now and I clicked on it the other day. Normally I click on it and there's nothing. And I clicked on it the other day and there was about 3,000 messages from people. <laughs> and most of them were from years ago, like 2018, 2019, 2020. I never saw any of them. They never showed up. So there's something wrong with my message thing on Instagram. So some of you listening may have messaged me like years ago, but most, I'm figuring most of those people probably don't, <laughs> probably don't listen to me anymore at all. Cause they're mad. Cause I didn't respond to them. <laughs> no, uh, look, I, I just can't keep up with it all. But I was, I was devastated because I thought, oh my gosh, all these wonderful people writing all these wonderful things. And then there's, there's also ones where people just are, you know, like, um, sharing me and their stories and stuff, but, but thousands of, I'm like, I'm scrolling through and I'm going, there's just too many. So, uh, I don't really know what to do because they're so old. I can't really get back to people on these. And so, you know, what, what do you do? So if you were one of the people that sent me a request on Instagram years ago and wondered why I didn't get back to you, because I didn't see it. And, there, and, and so there you go. But there's a problem because sometimes they show up and sometimes they don't. So for a while there, they were showing up and I was trying to answer them the best I could. And then they just went away. Okay. And then like a year later, two years later, because for a long time they went away and then I came back and, and there they all were. So it's really odd. But anyways, it's, it's kind of like with the emails. There was thousands of emails to catch up with and keep up with. And it's, it's so much work. And, and I'm, I'm not saying, oh, it's too much work for me. I'm saying I need to devise a better way uh, to interact with you, I suppose. But I love the Instagram and YouTube comments being open but if you're going to comment there more so i like it if it's more so just a comment but if you want to ask me a question please do me a favor and this is for me and my ocd add adhd elemental p every letter of the alphabet brain that just gets overwhelmed by all of it and wanting to reply to everybody try to keep it short and simple and this one is is harder for a lot of folks and i know that a lot of people use like the translate button or the what have you but if you're somebody that is typing, type the punctuation in for me. Uh, <laughs> it really helps my brain. I, I get on my daughter about this too. It's like, don't do S-R-Y for sorry. Write the whole word out. So I would prefer capitalized letters at the beginning of sentences and punctuation, periods and colons and all of that stuff, commas, so I can read it. So my brain can look down and see the simple question. That is just for me. This is... Try not to be offensive to anybody. It's just, it makes it so much easier for me. If you're going to ask me something, this is the way to do it. And, and quite frankly, it's the professional way to do it. If you're reaching out to somebody in the public eye or a, a public figure and you are putting that out there, just try to just keep it short and simple and sweet and something that they can actually answer. Don't ask personal questions. Don't ask too much about my family or anything. Just keep it simple and question that I can answer here on the show. But again, punctuation, if you can, is really appreciated. It's my pet peeve as an old man. So for old James, 
Uh, that's oh, this is like if we great Scott Marty, we're gonna t- we're gonna go into the future and listen to James as an old man. Well, wait a second, Doc. This is heavy. This is what James Arnold Taylor is gonna sound like. Let's listen. Hello, this is James Arnold Taylor on my podcast. Why I have an accent now, I don't know, but I but I'm talking like this. I'm an old guy, and old guys like me like it when young people. Write them nice letters and, and, and comments and stuff. See, I, I mo- mainly on Instagram and stuff, I do like the little heart. Is it the heart button? Yeah, it's a heart. I heart comments that I like. Same with on, on YouTube because there's a lot going on. And so that's my way of saying I read your post and I liked it. Okay. All right. So, well, we're just kind of doing some questions here today from some of the other folks. So Reginald, don't call me Reggie. You have patiently been sitting there waiting. Do you have questions? Now, you are the guy on the show that generally asks me really intense topics, uh, hard, hard-hitting questions about me and my life and all of that. And you're, and you're nodding your head right now, too. So, right, 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 right. Do you have some hard-hitting question for me that you've always wanted to ask that you haven't asked? Yes, I do. Okay, great. What is it? When are you going to tell everyone to drink water? Oh, <laughs> you're right. Ooh, ah, that's good water. Are you drinking water? Look at this. We're like 40 minutes into the James Arnold Taylor podcast or thereabouts. And I didn't tell you to drink water yet, man. And, and Reginald knows because his throat is getting parched because I'm not drinking any water. <laughs> See if you can figure that out. Thank you, James. That's much better. Oh, you do sound better now. Yes. I needed a little water. Ah, that's good water. But with all seriousness, Reginald, don't call me Reggie. I almost called you Reggie. Sorry. Stop it. All right. Is there a question that you have? You haven't interviewed me in a while. Is there stuff that you want to ask me or uh, anything like that? Why, of course. Yes. So I notice on your show, on the podcast, talking to myself, the Jatcast, the show with too many names. Hey. Well, it does. Just make up your mind. Which one is it? Is it talking to myself or is it the chat cast? It's talking to myself, colon, the chat cast. Well, I think that that's rubbish. Okay. <laughs> it's James Arnold Taylor's talking to myself, the chat cast. Isn't that a bit redundant because James Arnold Taylor and Jat are one and the same? So you're saying James Arnold Taylor's talking to myself, the James Arnold Taylor podcast. Well, kind of, but the way you put it there, it sounds so kind of, yeah, I guess so. Whatever, man. (laughs) Okay, so what is the big question then, Reginald? On the show, on the podcast, you don't talk a lot about Star Wars or Ratchet and Clank or Final Fantasy much anymore. Well, I've had all of those folks on the show and I've interviewed them. Originally, the show started as me doing voices and talking about my career as a voice actor. And I would interview my characters. And the thing is, is I've interviewed pretty much most of my characters now on the show. We've had all sorts of them. Go back and listen to some of these. I think they're great fun. I listen to them and and think, wow, how fun. And nowadays, it's been more about just me kind of talking and riffing and talking about my life and talking about things. I love talking about all the things in my career. The biggest issue with it is, is I don't want to get in trouble. You see, Reginald, because you can't always, I can't always talk about the things that I'm working on. And I can't always even tell stories from things because you do sign NDAs that keep you covered. So as much as I would love to tell old stories about Star Wars and stuff, I, I I don't really know which ones I can and which ones I can't talk about. And same with all Ratchet and Clank or Final Fantasy and stuff. Because I, and the ones that I can talk about, I've talked about kind of ad nauseum, at length. And so if you go and, you know, that's the other thing. Like a lot of people will ask me to be on their podcasts. And I, for me personally... When I'm asked to go on a podcast, I want to do something different. I want to say something unique. I want to say something fun, inspiring. I want to give them a new story. But there's only so many stories that I can tell over and over and over again. And I feel like then people go, well, I I love 
James's stuff and all that, but uh, every time he's on, he tells the same stories. And I don't want to do that to people. So, like, when I was a stand-up comic, when I was 16, I started as a stand-up comic. And you, when you're a stand-up comic, you have an act. And mine was like, you know, it started as five minutes, a five-minute act. And then you go up to, like, a 15-minute act. And then if you, you know, get even better, you do a half-an-hour act. And then ultimately, you'd have a, an hour-long act if you were a headliner. But my material... I always felt like, well, I don't want to keep doing the same material over and over because I feel like, well, what if somebody saw that already? <laughs> Which isn't the greatest, I mean, because you want to refine your act and you just do your act and the people love it. And what I found after doing like Star Wars Weekends, when I would do my show talking to myself, the, the stage show, this is talking to myself, the podcast, I would do the same show over and over and people loved it. But every year I came back to do new versions of the show, I would bring new pieces in and I would change stuff up and all. Why? Because I want to make it exciting for people that have seen it. Because God bless you all that did it. And you know who you are. There were folks that would come in and see every single show when we did Star Wars Weekends. And I always was like, oh, I'm sorry you're, you're watching the same show. But I think they loved it. And then when I think about myself as a kid watching things over and over again, I loved it. So then I go, okay, James, just relax and do that. So I can tell the same Star Wars stories over and over. I can't wait for like, you know, when I'm an old man, great Scott Marty, he's back. Well, wait a second, Doc, this is heavy. It's old James. <laughs> when I'm an old man and I get to tell stories about Star Wars and stuff, when it won't matter anymore. <laughs> and boy, the stories I will tell you all will be like, wow, that'll be, that'll make quite a book. No, just all the stories in my life as entertainment in entertainment and stuff. I've, I've had such a wonderful life working in so many wonderful things and I'm working with so many wonderful people. I'll tell you, okay, here's one that comes to my mind right now. Original, don't call me Reggie. Right, right, right. I remember I was recording the Force Awakens. I think it's, I guess it's the Lego game, right? It's a game. Billy? Yeah, Billy's nodding yes. Oh, it's a noise, it's a game. Thank you. The Force Awakens game, Lego game. I came in to record Obi-Wan Kenobi. And it was on it was on the Warner Brothers lot, which is for the Animaniac fans with the, the, the water tower and stuff there in Burbank. And I get in there and the place is electric. Everybody's all woohoo, they're all you know, excited and stuff, and, and I'm like Wow, they're really excited to see me. They weren't excited to see me. They were excited as who was just in there just before me. And I'm like, wow, who, you know, who? And they said, Harrison Ford. And I went, oh, and I missed him. (laughs) Because you got to understand. So for me, as a kid growing up in the 80s, primarily in the 80s, 70s and 80s, and Star Wars and Raiders of the Lost Ark, Raiders of the Lost Ark, like my all-time favorite movie, right? And and that movie, I've told this story many times, that movie got me through my childhood. It really did. I went and saw it every day in the summer for two bucks at the Magic Lantern Theater in Isla Vista, California, in Santa Barbara, California, where I grew up. And I would, I would literally sit, I'd pay two bucks and I'd sit in the theater all day into the evening watching Raiders and whatever else was playing with it. So I've seen that movie hundreds of times. And I, I literally mean hundreds. Hundreds of times. I can run the whole movie in my head right now if I want to. So always was a huge Harrison Ford fan. I, w- I, was, a, I was a very big Harrison Ford fan as a kid. I knew all his movies. I did everything, you know. And this is before computers and social media and stuff. So you had to just like have magazines and watch Entertainment Tonight. And, you know, that's how you would learn about people. Back in my day. Oh, it's old James again. Whoa, Doc, this is heavy. Okay, so I've always, you know kind of wanted to meet him and stuff. I was on the red carpet with him at the 35th anniversary of Empire Strikes Back. Now, see, this is, again, this goes back to the whole Z-list celebrity, or rather Z-list celebrity, where it sounds very exciting. You know, I was on the red carpet with uh, Harrison Ford and Ewan McGregor and uh, all the all the big stars at the 35th anniversary for Empire Strikes Back, which I was. I was on the red carpet with them and my friend Catherine Tabor and... And I didn't meet any of them. (laughs) 
because they like keep you away from them. Uh, you know, keep your distance, keep your distance. I, I'm not just a fan. I'm a, I'm a coworker. I want to say hi. No, no, no. Uh, anyways, so I, I was like bummed because this was my second chance to meet Harrison Ford and I didn't get to meet him then either. So I did my little part in Force Awakens and, and Harrison Ford had just recorded. So I guess the cool part was is we shared a microphone because I, I asked them, I said, did you change the mic or anything? Was this the mic he was on? Said, yep, that was my, okay. And he stood right where I'm standing, right? Yep, okay. Well, then that's pretty cool. So... <laughs> There's a, there's a Star Wars story I haven't told before. I don't think I don't think I've told that story anywhere before. Anyway, so anyway, so yeah, I feel like I tell all the same stories over and over. Or when I get a new story, I tell it somewhere, and then I'm just repeating. So that's why I don't tend to give a lot of stories on my podcast because I try to save them for when I guest guesting on other podcasts. Although I don't do a lot of guesting on other podcasts lately because. I kind of feel like I'm just going to say the same things over and over and it starts to just get redundant. I don't, and this is not me trying to get compliments, but I feel like it's just me. I mean, come on. And if you want to know about me, you've listened to this podcast already, so you already know all my stories. So as much as I love other people's podcasts, I kind of don't really feel like I have anything new to say on them. And again, I don't mean that like, oh, poor me or, oh, nobody cares. Nobody cares about me. I'm not, I'm not being Eeyore. I'm just, I honestly kind of go, meh, you know, and I don't have anything to promote because as a voice actor, you can't talk about things unless they're already out. So, you know, when there are things that I have to talk about, I do go on some podcasts from time to time. I think the last podcast I did was And Sons. And I talked about that recently on an episode. And I'm sad to say, it's funny, Catherine Tabor told me that right after I did that and talked about that, she told me that Ann's Sons is no longer a podcast. They went off and uh, the, the brothers split and, and are doing their own things, which I, I thought was a bummer. I'm sure the episode I did was is still out there, and I highly recommend it because I do share on that podcast a deeper look into my faith than than I even get sometimes here. Uh, although I've talked a bit about my faith already uh, in this episode. And in that episode, I, I do share some stuff about my life and where I've been over the last couple of years and stuff that I hadn't shared anywhere else. So that was a that was a pretty neat one because that was just more of a personal one. That was a that's a Christian podcast. So I spoke about my faith. I spoke about my life and a little bit of Star Wars. Now here I talk about, you know, and that's the other struggle. So so many of you are fans of Final Fantasy, Ratchet and Clank, or other things of my work, you know, Young Justice, what have you, work that I've done other than Star Wars. But the Star Wars tends to be like a higher majority, right? And the most outspoken fan base. So I think a lot of times people go, well, he just talks about Star Wars. It's like, yeah, I know. It's it's, But that not that what we've all kind of dealt with since Star Wars came out in the 70s is nothing but Star Wars, like Star Wars trumps everything. So I guess that happens a lot. But as far as stories about Final Fantasy and such, you know, I, I've told a lot of stories about that. And there's only so many stories to tell on that, too, because why? Well, with Final Fantasy, I've done, I don't know, what have I done? Like five, five games, something like that as Tetis, five or six games throughout 20 years. OK, now in Star Wars, in the last 20 years that I've worked in Star Wars, I've done hundreds of things, like literally hundreds of different things. And not just as Obi-Wan Kenobi, as Jedi Master Plo Koon. As Lieutenant Beck. Uh, As Reiko Hardeen. I killed Obi-Wan Kenobi. And in a lot of different things, right? So there's there's so much more of my, my resume in Star Wars. In Ratchet and Clank, though, now, to be fair, over the last 20 years of working in Ratchet and Clank, I think I've done 17 or 18 titles there. So there's a lot to talk about with Ratchet and Clank, I suppose, as well. But there's so many of those games that uh, it's my mind gets blown thinking about all the titles of Ratchet and Clank and all the stories. And I don't know, like people will ask me, what's my favorite? And I'll say, well, I loved the future series. I loved all that. But Rift Apart is really great. And we had a lot of fun. And I can talk about Rift Apart now because the game's out, I suppose. But I've mentioned, I think, already that so we started that before the whole COVID junk happened. 
And I was recording it in the studio at a studio in Los Angeles where I was living. And then we all did the whole, you know, work from home stuff as it's been now for un- unbelievably two years. Who could imagine? Because in my mind, I feel like it was just yesterday I was in studios in L.A. talking and doing sessions and such. But it's been two years. Wow. And so we finished the game at my home. And we finished it in several different home studios that I had because I moved. So that game was recorded over the course of, I want to say, two and a half years of recording. And that goes to show how much goes into some of these video games and the, just the massive amounts of care and love and attention to detail that the folks in Insomniac have for the Ratchet and Clank series and all that they put into it to make that game what it is, which is really getting all, all sorts of wonderful awards and such, I, 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 from what I'm hearing, and all, wonderful attention. And the game's a beautiful game, and it's, it's so much fun, and I love how people are reacting to Jennifer Hale's performance to see this kind of new uh, thing coming up with, with the characters and the development of story and such, and will there be more? I don't know. People always ask me that with all of the things that I work in. You know, will there be another one? Will there be another one? First off, I always get a kick out of people asking actors those questions because they know we're not supposed to answer them. But it's it's kind of like, so to me, just as somebody that is, somebody that really tries to just, I, look, I am, as I said, I am a wretch, you know, I am a sinner, I am a broken, fallen human being that falls and makes mistakes even still, even though I'm saved by the grace of, of my Lord Christ. But I really try to not do wrong things. And so when people do things that don't seem conscionable, where they're not thinking about it, which tends to be the norm nowadays, we kind of all tend to just do this without thinking. Like when you want to ask an actor about something to try to kind of get them to slip and give out information about something that is top secret. And and it's like, why? Well, because I love that. And and I love that actor. Then why do you want to get them in trouble? (laughs) You see what I mean? By asking us questions that we can't answer with the hopes that we'll slip and answer them will get us in trouble and or possibly removed. So so don't ask us questions about things. Be patient. I had a wonderful... Here's another Star Wars story. On stage at Star Wars Weekends, uh, I want to say 2013 or 2014, probably 2013, was it 2013 or 2014? One of the two. Of Star Wars Weekends, I'm hosting, and Mark Hamill is the special guest of the week, and we're doing these very special interviews that are being simulcast throughout the entire park of Disney's Hollywood Studios because they couldn't hold, because the premier theater where we were doing the show only held 1,500 people, and there were thousands of people that wanted to hear Mark's interview that were there to hear it. So they simulcast it all over the park on screens everywhere. So I'm on stage with Mark, and you can see all this on YouTube. And it's the first day of the interview. I'm going to interview him for three days in a row because he's there for the weekend, and it's Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Star Wars weekends. That's why we called him that. And it's one-on-one with Mark Hamill, and I'm interviewing Mark. And Mark's a dear friend of mine. I've known Mark for 20 years. and, and And we've always had fun on stage together and everything. He's always been very sweet to me and gracious and such. And it was when Force Awakens was going to come out. So I guess it probably was 2013, right? And, or no, it was 2014. I don't know. Okay, I'm going to do that until I look it up. And somebody here is like listening to this going, it was 2014, James. And I'm not hearing you because it's a podcast and that's not how it works. Anyways, so we're talking about Force Awakens and it hasn't come out yet. I mean, nothing. Nobody knows anything about it, right? Mark's got a beard. That's all we all know. And it's like, oh, he's like Obi-Wan Kenobi. And you know, he's the same age as Alec Guinness was when he recorded uh, Star Wars A New Hope and all of that. And uh, Oh my gosh. And none of us had any clue. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. If you haven't seen Force Awakens, that he's only going to show up for like three seconds at the end of the movie. <laughs> but Mark knew that because he is already there. So we talked for the first, I want to say five or 10 minutes about spoilers and all, and about how both he and I grew up in a time and place where you didn't have the ability for spoilers. It wasn't a possibility to have something spoiled like that unless, you know, you were just slow to going to the movie and some friend went and saw it before you and then went, could you imagine Darth Vader's is dead? What? No! You know, so what it did was like Mark and I both talked about the beautiful thing of no spoilers and not having access to everything. And why is that beautiful? Because that's how 
Oh, I mean, some of my fondest memories are imagining, wondering, what's the next Star Wars movie going to be like? And see, you all have to remember, there's only a handful of you probably listening to this that are my age that grew up when Star Wars was coming out originally. When I saw Empire Strikes Back, the farthest thing from my mind, spoiler alert, was that Darth Vader was going to say, hold on, let me grab my water and get the Darth Vader sound right. Obi-Wan never told you what happened to your father. He told me enough. He told me you killed him. No, I am your father. No, no, that's not true. That's impossible. And then then he jumps off the thing and falls and it's a bad blue screen effect. But that doesn't matter. And and, and the point is, is that we all couldn't have imagined. You couldn't have imagined it. It was cut to a, you know, what, what was I like? 10 or something, 10-year-old, 11-year-old James sitting there in the uh, Arlington Theater in Santa Barbara, California with my mouth agape at this. What? He's a... Because here's the other thing. There was no Anakin Skywalker. I mean, we we said that the name Anakin Skywalker was said a couple times in the first movie, right? And then the second... So we didn't have wonderful Matt Lanter or, or Hayden doing, you know, Anakin and the story. We didn't have the prequels. We didn't know any of that. To me, Darth Vader was like this kind of robot thing, you know? He's more machine now than man. Twisted and evil. And we just, so like when, you know, Ghostbusters came out or whatever, and there was like, I remember the teaser trailers for Ghostbusters were nothing. They were like a logo, the the, no ghost in the circle and the little cartoon ghost and all this... And we didn't know anything and it was beautiful. That's But now everybody needs to know everything and then the behind the scenes. And when I was a kid and they did behind the scenes stuff, that was exciting. When it, You got a VHS tape and then they you would get a second VHS tape that was a behind the scenes. Like I had a VHS, I think, of, you know, the making of Raiders of the Lost Ark. Now it's all... You know, I mean, then it was on DVDs, and so it was all on DVDs. And when that happened, it was like, oh, it was so cool because you always had all the behind the scenes because I eat up all of that stuff. I love all of that. But now they're all kind of boring because they're all just the same thing. Why? Because we all know everything. Everything that there is to know, we know now. And so I like the beauty of not knowing things like that until I experience it. It's the problem I have with most movie trailers now, how they give the whole movie away in the trailer. I hate that. Sorry, I try not to use the word hate much, especially on the show here. We try not to hate anything. I I so strongly dislike that. (laughs) Anyways, so off on a little bit of a tangent there, but I do remember very fondly Mark and I doing that. And then... Uh, then let me tell you another little uh, little cap capper because I'm trying to share some Star Wars stories with you here. After that, during those days at Star Wars weekends when Mark Hamill was the special guest, and it was a big deal for Mark Hamill to be there doing that. And this tells you the type of person Mark is. I I said to him, I you know he had a break in between things because there's a lot going on, and he had his whole family there, and they were experiencing Disneyland. He's a huge Disney fan. He wanted to go on rides and all of that stuff too. And I said, Mark, I know you got so much going on. But the cast and crew here are some of the sweetest people in the world. And I, I love them dearly. And they're just great kids. And would you... Uh, so what I do on my breaks, Mark, is I walk around and I go to the various... Their break rooms and their dressing areas and stuff. And I hang out with them and I talk with them. And I, you know, I just have a good time with them. Would you go with me over and, and do... So they had the light side and the dark side is how they have it at Star Wars Weekends when they would do that. So in other words the cast members that are the the good guys, you know, the Luke Skywalker and Han or Chewbacca or, you know, whatever, all those characters, C-3PO, they all have their dressing rooms on one side of the park in an area. And then the cast members that are the other, uh, the, the, the dark side where Darth Maul and Darth Vader live and all those and the stormtroopers, they all are in another, they're, they're separated. And it's kind of fun. They do it, you know, in a fun way. It's a fun way. So Mark is like, absolutely, James. And we went back and visited with all the cast members and he got to hang out with everybody and just you know made their day you know i walk in and like hey james you know and and right behind me is is mark hamill luke skywalker and their eyes boing and he just hung out and just talked to him and that's 
that's the beauty of of uh, my job as a Z-list celebrity is getting to uh, be a fly on the wall in some of these moments like that. I've had some amazing moments uh, with some amazing actors and amazing people in my life and some wonderful opportunities. And I love sharing them with you here and talking about them all here. But I also, it's hard to just remember everything. You know, maybe someday I'd write a book, but the truth is, is who cares, right? I mean, like who would buy it? You know, and I know, I know how that sounds because I know all of you are like, I would buy it. But the issue is, it's like my friend Tom Wilson. Tom Wilson, one of the dearest people in the world to me, you know, you know Tom from the film Back to the Future, of course, but you should know him from Freaks and Geeks. You should know him from so many other films and TV shows and work that he does because he's an amazing actor and artist. And Tom wrote an amazing memoir, autobiography, but it's also a fantasy. So it has a, it's a real unique book and it's called The Masked Man. And it's a beautiful story and it intertwines fantasy and which is what all of us actors are about. And it's exactly what I'm talking about, like creating fantasy and, and not giving away everything. So Tom tells the story of him working on Back to the Future, working as an actor, being a young young person. He talks about his, his young life and being a, an allergy sufferer and a, the skinny, scrawny kid. He was not a bully. He was bullied. And, you know... Uh, all these beautiful, wonderful stories, being one of the last people in the world to see John Belushi alive, sharing all these experiences with, with you know, from Steve Martin to Richard Pryor and all in between. Wonderful stories in this wonderful, wonderful book that also has a little bit of fantasy because he, he pulls a character, Clayton Moore, who played the Lone Ranger, and he comes back to life and is kind of his buddy. It's like a buddy thing. It's, it is an amazing book. And we recorded, he wrote the book, which was an amazing accomplishment. And then we recorded it in my home studio years ago in Santa Barbara as an audiobook. And Tom read it and I engineered it and mastered it and put it together and put it out. And it's on Audible. You can get it as a, a book. But he just um, put it up on YouTube. And so now you can get his entire book for free on YouTube. Okay. The Masked Man. Go to Tom Wilson's YouTube channel and listen to this. There's 22 chapters. And if for those of you that like audiobooks and like listening to people talk, and which you probably do because you're listening to me talk right now, listen to Tom's book and learn so much, not just about Back to the Future, but about his life as an actor, his life as a, a man of faith and family and friendship and all of the experiences he's gone through in his life, which are, are big things. And he did this wonderful book. And, you, you know, I think it's gotten 200 listens he was saying to me it's like it's really hard what i'm trying to say is it's it's very hard those of you that that love us we love you and thank you but i'm not a big enough celebrity for it to matter in other words if i wrote a book i'd have to do like my other book because I, I have written a book chat 365 and i self-published it and i've sold thousands and thousands of copies of that book which is great but it's not what makes money for people thousands of copies of books hundreds of thousands of copies of books, tens of thousands of copies of books, then they're interested. So I could write a memoir, but who would care? Who would read it? Well, all of you would. And, and I don't mean that you're nobody, you're somebody. But what you have to realize is the amount of time and energy and emotion and emotional churning and gurning and burning that it takes to put that on paper, like what Tom did with his book. It's, it's a masterpiece. And yet, you know what? 500, 1,000 people, a couple thousand people will, will have read it or listened to it. That's, that's a shame. To me, that's a shame. It sh it, his book should honestly be made into a movie. And, and here's the crazy part, because everybody's so crazy about Back to the Future. And look, you know, before I knew Tom, I was a huge fan of Back to the Future. And, but let me say this as well. I was a huge fan of Tom Wilson's, because I used to watch Tom Wilson's stand-up on The Tonight Show. And, and other places where I'd see him, and, and Letterman and all these places where he was doing stand-up comedy because that's what I wanted to be. And that's what I was, I was striving for. And I loved this guy. He was great. And he did different things. And he, and he was just funny. And then he was also in this movie that happened to be just very, you know, big movie, very influential and all that. And then, you know, and I've been lucky enough to have a part, you know, kind of a, you know, kind of a, a stepchild part in in the world of Back to the Future because I play young Doc Brown in the video games of Back to the Future, and so 
my relationship with him is not about Back to the Future at all. And his life is not about Back to the Future. His life is about his life. And so it's kind of like me with Star Wars. Like everybody wants to know the Star Wars stories, the Star Wars stories. And we it's not that we don't want to tell those stories or aren't interesting. And like I say, his would make an amazing movie, especially with all of the interest that people have in Back to the Future these days because it's so hip again. It would make it a fantastic biopic. And if Hollywood had any brains at all, they'd give Tom a check for like $2 million, buy the rights to it, and make a movie for $10 million. And it would make about $100 million because everybody would love it. I know people are going, well, probably wouldn't make that. Oh, it, regardless, cut the numbers in half, whatever. Give, give Still, people would love that movie. I would love to see it because his story is a great story and it's it's a great perspective. So I would love to tell my story and the deeper parts of my story in my life. But that's why this podcast is here, because I get to kind of tell it here because it's the best place for it, because it's just more casual and it's more intimate. And it's for those of you that really care. And that's what's so special about all of you is that you really care. You care enough to listen to me go on and on for, you know, 60 minutes, 70 minutes, 80, 90 minutes. Sometimes, my goodness, my family doesn't want to listen to me go on that long. (laughs) So anyways, kind of the whole show has been a tangent again today, but I think these ones are kind of fun. And we had a lot of guys here in the show and the uh, things. I, I, Hank, you didn't get to ask me any questions. Yeah, it was I, I had the most important questions. You did? Yeah, I sure did. Okay. Well, what are they? Wouldn't you like to know? <laughs> Is that the question? What do you mean? Nothing. Wouldn't I like to know? Yeah, I would. That's why I said, what are they? Well, wouldn't you like to know? I don't think you have any questions, do you? No, not really. I don't care about you. Okay. <laughs> well, at least you're honest. You hurt my feelings, but you're honest. Oh, poor baby. Now, what is that? Well, come on. Well, I'm just saying, you know, you said at the beginning of the show, our whole thing is our little banter back and forth. You, you used the word banter. That was a big word for you. Yeah, come on, man. Okay. We give each other a bad time, Hank. You're right. But you don't have any big questions for me? Yeah, okay, so uh, what's the meaning of life? (laughs) Wow, what's the meaning of life? Well, you know, I would say what the Lord said, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and to love your neighbor as yourself. That's the meaning of life. And then to enjoy every moment of it and, and try to be joyful instead of seeking happiness or stuff. Happiness is achievable and happiness is a good thing, but joyfulness, I think, is more important. And knowing God, deeply knowing, truly knowing God. I would I what what you know, I know, like I say, some folks kind of go, uh, oh, they get a little uncomfortable, they squirm a little if I talk about my faith and stuff, but they that you, you hang with me. And for that, I'm so appreciative, folks. I really am. It does not go unnoticed how many of you comment the like, you know, I'm not I'm not the same faith as you, or I don't have any faith like that, but I appreciate you talking about it, James, and, and I like hearing getting a perspective of it. That's all I, I hope to do here in that. I but well. I hope to talk about it enough to give somebody interest enough to seek God the way that I know God, because God has created my life, but also changed my life. So for me, yes, for people to love the Lord, their God, to know God, and then to love your neighbor as yourself. What does that mean? Well, to, to you know, truly care for everybody, even the people that you don't like. It's really hard. You know, we've, we've had a lot of talks of, of that in in our house the last couple of days because uh, there are people in my life that have hurt me that it's like well how do you get past that and, and move forward and all that you forgive because we're all we all have done something to somebody at some point that wasn't the best thing and so you you understand where people come from when they make mistakes because why well because we're all fallen and broken and we all make mistakes so I can forgive completely, but reconciling requires people to actually reconcile with you and to actually come to you and earnestly seek that forgiveness because they're moved to do it, not because you told them to or they feel like, well, I guess I just say I'm sorry. And yet, can you move forward and have forgiveness for somebody if they're not willing to do that or or aren't able to do that or aren't around anymore? Well, absolutely you can. You just show love and you you understand in your heart that we're all fallen and broken people. And so 
it's hard, but you, you give it up and you, you let it go. But it doesn't mean that you're going to necessarily be in relationship with those people because some people, no matter what, they're, and they, they will hurt you no matter what. So, and they don't mean to. A lot of times people will, and that's how it can be, you know, with a lot of relationships, tumultuous relationships to where it's like oil and water. When these two people come together, it just doesn't work. And so that's, that's the way it is with a lot of people. Um, I'm off on a real weird tangent, but that's, that's it, Hank. That's, that's the meaning of life to love the Lord your God and to love your neighbor as yourself. Really, really important. And, and, and how do you love, you know, I mean, you just, you smile at the market, you say hi, because nobody tends to do that anymore. If you're, if you need to get something, you say, pardon me, I'm sorry. I'm just going to, can I just get over there and get, you know, at the grocery store or whatever. Um, You hold a door for somebody, especially uh, somebody older than you. You respect your elders and, and show them love and appreciation. And, and, you know, that would be the one thing I would say to all of you young folks uh, listening is find somebody older than you and ask them to tell you a story and learn from them today. Because, man, oh, man, there's a lot of beautiful people with a lot of beautiful wisdom that are just ready to, to share that with you. So those are the things, Hank. And you asked the deepest question uh, in the show today, Hank. I'm proud of you. Yeah, man, whatever. Okay. Well, hey, shall we bring in Mr. Announcer Guy and end the show? Yeah, let's do it. Let's. Okay, so what do you do? You say, uh, end the show, Announcer Guy. No. No, that's not it at all. Do you ever listen to this show? Not really. <laughs> I mean, not unless I have to. Well, you're supposed to. You're the engineer. You're the one pushing the buttons and making a record. I let Billy do that. Okay. You say, hey, Mr. Announcer Guy. Well, that's what we did at the beginning. I know, but that's how he comes in. He won't know to come in unless you call him. Okay. So what do I do? Hey, Mr. Announcer Guy. Hey, Mr. Announcer Guy. No, you got to do it. Okay. Are we really going to go through this again? I thought it was pretty funny. Hey, Mr. Announcer Guy. Yes, Hank. Do the mumbo jumbo legal dumbo. He means the legal mumbo jumbo. Yeah, Jet. Thanks for the translation, dude. You got it. Talking to myself, the James Arnold Taylor Podcast is a production of Yumigo Inc. Recorded at Jet Studios. Engineered, written, recorded, and produced by, you guessed it, James Arnold Taylor. All voices are parody and should be construed as entertainment only. All music and sound effects used with permissions and licenses through backtracks, digital juice, production tracks, and partners in rhyme. James Arnold Taylor's Talking to Myself, the podcast. Copyright 2022. All rights reserved. That was pretty good. I got I, it. I, Talking to myself, the James Arnold Taylor Podcast, it's a production of You Me Go. You Me Go. That's like if I drank too much water listening to your show. You Me, we gotta go. <laughs> okay. All right. Yes, indeed. Drink some water, take a breath, relax. You know, do me a favor. We normally do that when we're, uh, you know, starting the show, but let's do it to end the show. I want you to leave the show feeling refreshed and good. And, I, you know, I, I just kind of blathered on about nothing today, but I hope you enjoyed it, spending some time with me. We'll be back again with another episode soon. But today, ah, breathe, relax. It's all good. Get out there and enjoy this life. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and love your neighbor as yourself. Know more than you want to know, which means don't just know the parts that you like that make you feel good. Know things that make you uncomfortable and learn why other people think those things. And you might just learn something more about yourself and know what you believe and why you believe it. Don't just say, I believe because James Arnold Taylor says it, or this person says it, or my pastor says it, or my parents say it. Know it because you know it in your heart to be true and you've sought the truth yourself and you found answers yourself. Never be afraid to find answers yourself. Never be afraid to be wrong and never be afraid to apologize or look for the good in every situation. Okay, my love and blessings to all of you. Thanks so much for listening to the James Arnold Taylor Podcast. We'll talk to you very soon. Now, Hank, I'll let you end the show. You say, a bye bye like that. A bye bye like that. No, no, you just say, a bye bye or goodbye. Either one. Sometimes I say bye bye and sometimes I say goodbye. So, whichever one you want. See you later. Okay. All right. What? No, that works. It's fine. Bye bye. Bye bye. There you go. <laughs>